From Drop Biscuit Studios and the people who brought you Wondery's Inside Jaws, Inside the Exorcist, and Inside Psycho comes You Talking to Me? Bite Size Hollywood History with plenty of bite. Enter the real Bruce Lee. This is You Talking to Me? I'm Mark Ramsey. Even today, Bruce Lee is synonymous with Kung Fu. But you'll be surprised to know that when Lee died back in 1973 at age 32, he was virtually unknown in the United States. His breakthrough movie, Enter the Dragon, was released less than a month after his death. And from there, the legend grew and grew. Matthew Polly, the author of a biography about Lee, has noted that Lee is the only major Western icon whose fame is entirely posthumous. Millions of kids around the world would later take up Kung Fu because of the dazzling on-screen performances of Bruce Lee. Few other entertainment legends cast such a long shadow on generations of fans. But the truth about Bruce Lee, the patron saint of Kung Fu, is more complex than the legend. It's true, Lee was a notorious health and fitness freak. He didn't smoke or drink. He sucked down vitamin supplements and drank raw, blended hamburger meat. Yum! His intense training regimen transformed him into a fighting machine. He could do two finger push ups and send opponents flying with his famed one inch punch. But also, Bruce Lee went through a hippie phase. He grew his hair long, sported love beads, and donned a shikis. He got high. One student stopped training with him at his home because he was sick of all the pot smoke swirling around. Lee would often greet other martial artists with the same invitation. Hit me as hard as you can with either hand whenever you're ready, Polly writes. And then he'd brush away their punches as easily as you would a baby. He knocked out one Japanese karate expert in 11 seconds. One time, Lee and two friends were in Las Vegas outside a casino when they ran into a mountain of a man, a bodyguard for Sammy Davis Jr. The bodyguard raised his hand to wave at someone behind Lee, but Lee thought he was about to be attacked. He snapped. In seconds, Lee kicked out one of the bodyguard's legs, locked his arms, bent him backwards, helpless, and went right at his throat with the points of his fingers. The hapless bodyguard was, was stunned. When Lee realized it was all a big misunderstanding, he apologized. What the hell did you do to me, the bodyguard asked. As he prepared for the release of Enter the Dragon, Bruce Lee knew he was about to become an international star. He was negotiating for an animated series and a clothing line, and movie studio offers were pouring in. He'd even been booked to appear on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. And then, unexpectedly, shockingly, he died. There's been a lot of mystery about Bruce Lee's death over the years. Remember, he was in peak health and only 32. In fact, the cause of his death was prosaic, almost boring, and certainly unbecoming a legend. Bruce Lee most likely died of heat stroke. He collapsed three months earlier after isolating himself in a hot editing room without air conditioning. You see, he'd had his armpit sweat glands removed because he didn't like sweat stains on his clothes. We need those things, Bruce. Meanwhile, Enter the Dragon was about to be released, and he was nervous. He wasn't sleeping or eating right. As Lee's biographer points out, he's in perfect shape. All he does is work out. But if you haven't been sleeping, if you've lost a bunch of weight, if you remove the sweat glands under your armpits, then you're less likely to deal with heat than you would have beforehand. Even a healthy man can die in those conditions. And so, the world lost Bruce Lee as it gained an icon who will likely influence us for generations to come. Follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you are listening right now, and give us a five-star rating, and please tell your friends. That's you talking to me. I'm Mark Ramsey.